Well, and welcome. My name is Dan Nato, Application Engineer here at Saratech. Today I'm going to be discussing setting up a force versus displacement spring element inside a FEMAP. So inside Excel I have my force versus displacement function and I'm going to copy this into FEMAP. So I'm going to grab my values, copy them, and I'm going to create the function inside of FEMAP. So to do that, you right click on functions, new, and I'm just going to paste this directly from the keyboard and now it is inside the software. So now that I have my function defined, let's go ahead and set up a property to define stiffness. Now let me give you a quick background of the model first though. So I have a simple beam element that is constrained on one side in all degrees of freedom except for six, so it's allowed to rotate in my example around my Z degree, my Z axis here. And what I have over here is I have a load on the other side of the beam, and below I have a node that's constrained in six degrees of freedom. So my goal here is I want to create a spring element between the loaded location and the ground, and I want to stop this object from rotating. So what I'm going to do is specify a stiffness between these two objects using a spring element. Now the spring element I want to define using my force versus deflection. So I have a, you know, a load of 20 pounds over here. Therefore, I want to limit the deflection at the end of this beam. So for this case, if we go back to look at my function, if I apply a force of, 40, of 20 pounds, I should get a deflection of 0 0.05 inches. So let's define the spring element. So to do that, let's go ahead and say model element. And we're going to go from one node to the other node to define our spring. Now we haven't defined our property, so let's define our property. And our spring element is going to have stiffness in the global y direction. So we'll type a value of 1 here. We're going to orient it to the global coordinate system. And inside this nonlinear slash frequency response button, You'll see up at the top you have stiffness versus frequencies, and then below you have your force versus displacement, which is a nonlinear function dependent. So to do this, you must run a nonlinear solution. So in this case, let's go ahead and grab uh, degree of freedom 2, and let's link our force versus uh, displacement function. So now our stiffness is 1 times that function. So make sure you're linking the correct property and I'm going to specify orientation directly from that property. So you see now I have a spring between those objects that is reference to this force versus displacement function. I'm going to go ahead and create a simple solution. Right click on analysis, manage, hit new, and for this we need to make sure we're running nonlinear static. And if you are running a nonlinear solution you have to make sure that you uh, set up your nonlinear options so you can just select nonlinear options edit and specify your number of increments for the solution. So let's go ahead and break it down into time 10 increments here. Just going to keep it simple. And let's solve the model. Just going to go ahead and solve the model. This will take a moment to solve. So just a, a quick review um, of the function. We said we have a 20 pound load. You'll see we should have a 0 0.05 uh, deflection out here at the end of the beam. So let's go ahead and look at our results and go to our post processing and let's go ahead and specify a contour arrow plot and let's specify it for the T2 direction. I'm going to zoom in on the end. I'm going to hide my, my uh, load here and you'll see that I have my 0 0.05. So that is the, matches the curve. So that looks great. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we change our load. So in this case, let's go back to our load. Let's edit the value that was defined. And just to go back to our, our function here, let's go ahead and pull up a, a value that we could see. So at 0 0.04 on my scale, I should have a load of 140 here. So if I you know, enter in a load of 140, I'm going to have a displacement of 0.4. So let's go ahead and change our load to 140 pounds. And let's go ahead and solve our solution again. Now that I have my solution complete, once I double click and make my new uh, analysis active, or I can switch here in the post-processing toolbox, you see that my displacement is that 0.4, which also matches the curve. 
Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.